name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. Thank you for allowing us to come to wherever you are to share the good news of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, thank you again for allowing us to minister this precious word to who I believe are his precious people. And thank God for allowing us again to share this good news. Today, I want to come to you from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 28 and verse 29. Also, Mark, chapter 5 and verse 34, which reads as follows. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Mark chapter five, verse 34 reads as follows. And he said to her, daughter, your faith have made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Based on what I've just said to you, I want to talk to you from this topic, trusting the touch, trusting the the touch. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for all you do for us. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins and iniquities. Thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Father, we pray for these next few minutes that you will open up our minds to receive the thus, what thus saith the Lord. Father, we continue to bind the enemy every spirit of fear, unbelief, hardness of heart, anger, pride, jealousy, and so forth. And we try to hinder what the Lord is doing in our lives. And Father, we pray for these next few minutes that we'll be attentive to what the Spirit of God is saying through to us as well as through us. Father, we thank you, God, that we're attentive we want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We want to receive it. We want to apply it in our everyday life. And Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. When it comes to the word trusting, it can be defined as placing confidence or having conviction that a particular thing is true. Touch can be defined as to be in contact with something or someone. And so we want to look today at the woman who touched the clothes of Jesus and the conviction and the confidence that she had in that touch and how she received so much more than a regular touch. And I believe truly that we as believers can touch Jesus in a way that we receive so much more than we had originally thought we would receive. Let's start off in the book of Mark, chapter 5 and verse 25. Now, a certain woman had a flow or issue of blood for 12 long years. And I can imagine if you're dealing with something for 12 years, you've had some ups, you've had some downs, you've had some disappointments, you've had some frustrations. You've dealt with a lot in 12 years. It goes on here, Mark chapter 5, verse 24, and that suffered many things from many positions. She has spent all that she had, and she was no and she and was no better but rather grew worse. Interesting term that Mark uses to describe this particular woman. She had suffered, she had been affected in a bad sense on many different areas from many positions. And she had spent all that she had, but notice this, but she grew worse. I know we don't mind spending if we get better, but we want to be in a position that if we spend, we want to get better. And so notice what he says in Mark 5 and 27. And But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. So she heard something, what, or she, and she considered what she heard about Jesus. I like that. She heard about Jesus, came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Mm. She touched his garment. 
And in verse 28, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. I like this. If only I may touch his clothes or his garments, I shall be made well. I shall be healed. I shall be preserved. I shall be saved and I shall be saved. But notice if when we touch Jesus, something happens and it causes us to walk in better, to be better and to experience better because he had trust in the touch. She had trust in the touch. See, the touch brought about healing. It brought about safety. It brought brought about preservation. It brought about salvation, which is deliverance, protection, and prosperity. Her conviction was strong because she believed that when she touched him, her life would not be the same. She had spent all she had with physician and did not get better. In fact, the Bible said she got worse, but she believed that when she touched, oh God, Jesus, huh? she believed she was going to get better. She believed she was going to be well. She believed that she, she was going to experience better in her life. And she was convicted about that. Conviction means this, a firmly held belief regarding a particular thing. See, a belief that will cause you not to be persuaded by anything else. Many of us have convictions that may or may not all be rooted and grounded in truth. But no doubt our point of conviction is usually our point of commitment. When her conviction activated her faith, notice what happened in Mark chapter 5 and verse 29. Immediately. Mm. Immediately, shortly after the fountain of her blood that she had been dealing with, I'm, paraphr- I'm adding this in, that she'd been dealing with for 12 long years. Hallelujah. And you know what about God? God doesn't, it doesn't matter to God how long you've been dealing with something, but he can change your situation in a moment. Only one word from God, one touch from God can change your situation to cause better to take place in your life. And then notice what he says here in the word of God. And she felt in her body that she was Heal. And she, no, that, that word heal is interesting. It means to make whole of her affliction. The affliction that she dealt with with 12 years, one touch from God, one touch from the master. Not only this, you got to see in the scripture, she touched Jesus, not that Jesus touched her. And say, sometimes we need to uh, examine our faith and asking the question, are we touching Jesus? Are we uh, extending ourselves to a point that we're making a difference in the touch? Not like the crowd, not like the nation, sayers and gainsayers, but are we touching the master? And I had to ask myself the question in looking at this message, am I touching Jesus in a way that gets his attention? Am I touching him in a way that we read in Mark chapter 5 and verse 30 and we immediately know it in himself that power had gone out of him. We got to be in a position that we touch God, that power goes out of him, ability and abundance and strength and miracle working power goes out of Jesus. And he says this, who touched me? Who good God am I Who touched my clothes? Who attached himself to me? Who cleaned himself to me? Who cleaned themselves in such a way that power, ability, abundance, and miracle work, miracle working power went out of him and into that particular woman? Notice this touch was not an ordinary touch. This is not a touch where you just show up to a service lackadaisical. It's not a time where you have devotion time and you just, you know, you're just, mm, if I read it, if I don't do it or, or so what, then it's not that kind of touch that praises God 
that don't get no kind of results. You're lifting up your hands, but you just lift them because somebody told you to. But this is a touch that gets the attention of the master, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, the alpha and the omega. This is a touch that gets his attention. It causes ability to come forth. That causes abundance to come forth. That causes power to come forth. That causes strength to come forth. That causes miracle working power to come forth. That causes influence to take place in our lives. That causes the force of the power of God to move mightily in our lives. Mm. Let me go on to verse 31, Mark chapter 5 and verse 31. But disciples said to him, you see, you know that the multitude is strong in, strong in you and you say, who touched me? Oh, there's a lot of people touching you, but not many people are getting the power to come forth. Not many people are getting the anointing to come forth. Not many people are touching you in this way that it gets your attention and ask the question, who touched me? Now, let's face the facts right here, right now. We know Jesus knew who touched him. The question was not for him. The question was for his disciples and the woman who touched him because he's omniscient God. He knows everything and he's everywhere. He's omnipotent, omnipresent. He knows everything. And he's everywhere. God knows everything. So we understand that Jesus was trying to teach us, not only teach us, but teach the disciples as well as the woman who touched them a lesson. It goes on to read here in Mark chapter five, verse 32. And he looked around to see who had done this thing. And in verse 33, Mark five and 33, but the woman feared and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Like he didn't already know it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and in verse 34, and he said to her, your faith, your, your conviction of the truth, your conviction that God is a healer and a deliverer, your, your conviction, notice what he said, your, your faith has made you whole, go and made you well, go in peace. Notice what he put upon her. He said, go in peace peace. Go in deliverance. Go in prosperity. Go in safety. Go in security and be healed of your affliction. Not only go in peace, but be healed of your affliction. The one you've been dealing with for 12 long years. Though the anger issue, be healed of it. That pride issue, be healed of it. I was thinking along this line. He was telling her this because I'm sure in 12 long years, she had been disappointed. She had been, listen, upset. She had been frustrated. I can imagine if I've been going to the doctor all this time for 12 years and spent all the money I had, I would be frustrated. I would be disappointed. I would be hurt. I would be, listen, I would be upset. But God said, be healed of that. And so you got to understand, God is big enough to not only heal you of your afflictions, but to heal you emotionally, heal you of every disappointment, every frustration, everything that has gone wrong in your life. God can heal you of it. Listen, God is a great God. He is greatly to be praised. You can't limit God to just healing your body, but you got to allow God to heal you physically as well as mentally. And allow him not only heal back, but I believe he also healed her pocketbook as well. If she carried a pocketbook or how she carried the money. So he saw, said, go in peace. I believe he brought about prosperity in your life, in her life, just like he does in your life. See, God is a healer. He's a forgiver. And God can heal you not only and bring peace in your life. Glory be to God. And we, and I like what Ephesians 3 and 20 says to the God who can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. See that God, listen, she asked to be, uh, she thought she was going to be healed, but God added peace into her life. He gave her more than what she asked for. And God is do, will do the same thing for you. If you will go and believe God, if you will touch and believe in that 
that touch, not only will he heal you, but he will also bring about deliverance. He will bring about protection. He will bring about joy. He will bring about prosperity in every area of your life. But the thing you got to do, you got to trust the touch. Do you trust the touch? And are you truly touching Jesus in a manner that gets his attention? Oh, we got to touch him by faith. Like the woman said, like Jesus told the woman, it is your faith that made the difference. She believed God. She believed God. She trusted the Lord. She trusted the Lord. And God did not disappoint. And he'll do the same thing for us if we trust him. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Now we pray, not only for myself, but for everyone that's listening, that's agreeing with me in this prayer, that as we go before our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we'll touch him in a way that gets his attention. We'll touch him through faith. By faith, our conviction, our trust, our confidence, our assurance, and our belief in Jesus. As we touch him, we know we're going to receive the better. We, know we won't be worse, but we'll get better, just like you did for this woman with the issue of blood. And Father, I thank you for these precious believers who were made up in their mind. I'm going to touch him, and not only would I be healed, but I'll go in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Well, thank you again for allowing, allowing us to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're ever in the Villarica area, come see us at 3097 South Van Worth Road in Villarica, Georgia. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Thank you again. I and my name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. And remember, when I'm a vision, the people perish. We'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome to the Overcomers Christian Center website, where you can find us located at OCCVR.org. And we are under the direction of Pastor Richard E. Dobbs and First Lady Cassandra J. J. Dobbs. And here at OCC, our vision is empowering and equipping our world. To the right of the website, you will find our social media pages. And if you click on the media page, you will find our weekly YouTube videos, where you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as our weekly podcast that you can access by clicking this link right here. If you'd like to donate or give to the ministry, you may do so by mail, or if you'd like to donate online, you have two options. The first option is by clicking on the donate this donate button, which will lead you to the paypal.com website, or you may use the giving app. You can access the giving app by either texting give to the phone number and following the directions, or you can download the giving app via Apple Store or Google Play. Thank you so much to your giving and your donations as it helps us to give to the ministry, give to the community, and share the gospel. If you'd like to send a prayer request, you may do so by filling the following information here to your right. And if you would like to visit our church, our weekly services are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And you may access the, the address and telephone number right here under the contact section. Thank you so much on behalf of Pastor and First Lady Dobbs. Be blessed.